So the point being, at the beginning of the program, the, the sponsoring group, the sponsoring group will trigger the program start by issuing the program mandate. Right? So we get this program mandate being issued, and this kicks off, this document kicks off the first process, which is identifying a program process. Okay, so we have identifying a program process, a program where we carry out some high level activities uh, to ensure that, you know, it's viable and worthwhile from a, a bigger perspective. So viable that we can actually get this thing to be built or we can and worthwhile from a business perspective from the investment into the program overall because it's quite a big investment in the program remember so you've got a large investment in this a lot of resources involved in it whether it's six months or six years there's still quite a lot of people involved over a period of time quite intensive and usually quite a bit of money i mean you know, the data center we put together uh, a few years ago was like $50 million worth, but it was only over about a six month period, both both the production and the backup site were really about nine months overall at the end of the day. So we want to make sure that what we're doing is viable and worthwhile from that perspective. Now, obviously at this point in time, the, um, the two main roles that we have on board are going to be the SRO, who's part of the sponsoring group, remember the SRO, is a member of the sponsoring group, right? So the first role that comes in here is the SRO, uh, comes from the sponsoring group, and will be one that carries the mandate. So the mandate will be with the SRO. And the other one is going to be the program manager, right? Because somebody's got to do and start documenting things. So we have the program manager at this point. Now you may well have the business change manager, the BCM, the business change manager, and to a certain extent, the, the program office lead, if you've got the organization up and running already. So you've got the program, uh, the program office lead, the POL, right, not the police, but the program office lead at this point. Right. And the main activity here is to analyze the drivers for the program, to understand what is the program actually about. So here we are to analyze, analyze the drivers. And you know, this will come from the mandate. Most of this information will be in the mandate, what they call the terms of reference. And we're taking that information and making some a formal document. So one of the outputs of this program, uh, identifying a program process, is going to the program brief, which arguably is also or considered as the outline business case. I mean, up here we have the strategic business case and here we have an outline business case so the strategic is the level of your business case as much as if you're doing the five case business case there is a strategic case in there at strategic level to represent that area so the strategic level is the high level view of the whole pro of the whole business case at this point right so this, you analyze the drivers and the justification but we need to look at this justification we need to look at this from a program perspective because the mandate might be in sort of executive speak but we need to get that confirmed written down as a bit more of a a program style document the brief stroke business case in this case all right and therefore take a formal a formal program view of the initiative that we're going to run here all right um, and make sure that we have a good idea and that it's a tangible idea tangible something that we can actually you know get a touchy-feely view about because we're going to have to write the vision for it so the vision's got to be able to define how we are seeing ourselves in the future already so something's got to be fairly you know evidenced by that anyway so the output from here is going to be the program brief the program brief which you know, as I said, is that is the, the first main document. I put a kink in there to represent a document, but that is also arguably um, the business case. Well, I'll, 
the outline business case in this case outline business case depends you know really on how you want to look at it because as you can see from MSP's perspective it treats the two documents slightly differently with the information that contained them but really if you bolt them all together because the business case is looking at it primarily and purely from a business perspective look at the time frames the budgets why are we here the rationale and looking at the um, the vision we have and the benefits, right? And look at the investment and any major risk, of course, with investments and then the sort of options we may have on how we want to roll this out. Options being linked to how much have I got to spend or how much do I need to spend and the type of uh, transformational change you want at the end of it. You know, you want something that's, you know, completely brand new, and you, can, you know, like changing your bathroom. Do I want a brand new bathroom? I'm just going to give it a quick lick of paint sort of thing, right? And... Also, we need to start estimating some high-level work that might be involved in the program at this point, right? So we need to incorporate that uh, as the high-level work. So we often have a plan in place because, and this is where the structure theme may come into, into place initially, we may have a plan in place. There may be some strategic uh, points, right, decision points linked back to decision points linked back to portfolio, right? So portfolio may be, um, or fund releasing decision points you might have to have in there. But also, as you get towards the end of identifying a program, what you are going to be doing is planning your design, the outcomes, the next process, which might be a good idea to at least put some provision in there for planned progressive delivery uh, process as well. Because technically, if you've got to start this at a point in time, then you want to make sure that you reverse engineer it. You need some time to do the planning and some time to do the designing. So you need to know when I'm going to kick that off, right? Or I'll kick that off and plan it so at least I can get this started. Because right? you, you need to spend a good deal of time in here. It'll be iterative, but not to the nth degree. You don't spend time in there to the nth degree, especially in the design, because, you know, you don't want to go down to that level. Now, partly because if it's a five-year program, you know, it, it's an awful lot of detail to put in there. And the second thing is you might not get halfway down the first first tranche anyway, right? So don't do that. So we plan here, plan, and that's at the end of the, the, the process, plan the next the next process, right? Or the next step, right? Okay. Now, alongside that, there will be decision making about whether to go or not. So we need to agree, agree a go, no go perspective as well right now during the during the identifying a program the two main uh, themes that we're going to be talking about here so the two main themes are going to be organization organization because we need roles etc so that's the one theme because we've got the roles here as you can see and the other one is the justification the justification theme because, you know, really we have the business case and we're trying to work out the drivers. So all these, these elements are part of justification. Now, at the same time, we may well be starting to put the rest of the governance strategy uh, together through the other themes and the other approaches. So the approaches will be coming out of the other themes. You may have some decision themes going on. We have major risks in the business case. So we may well have a risk register up and running already. Uh, and therefore, the approach to how we handle risk. Uh, from an assurance point of view, if it's a very sensitive or risky natured pro program, you'd have assurance in place at that level too. Um, so when it comes to the governance strategy document, I'll put here governance, the governance, the program strategy, I beg your pardon, the program strategy, uh, the rest of those documents will be, the approaches will be sort of a reasonably high level approaches there at outline, right? In outline at this point in time, right? For the rest of the themes, so most of the themes. So the key themes are gonna be here, right? And then this will go into the strategy for the, you know, the governance approach here, and then the funding approach and the financial, um, the financial planning will also be there. So you'll also have the plans theme the so the program plan 
running at this time. Right, so here we go. Program plan. Program plans, because if you've got um, some of the approaches in place already, you remember there's the financial plan, there's the assurance plan, the comms plan, and the benefits realization plan will be linked to that. So there will be these plans coming out of here as well, linked to that. And of course, you've also got this one in place, right? So structure is taking place already at high level using the structure theme at this point to put your program plan in place here. Right? And once you get the agreement to go or no go, you then will move out of here into the next uh, process. Right? So we come out of here and move up. Let me get the right pen. Whoops. Up here to the next process, which is therefore going to start doing a lot of work. So the point here of identifying a program is to ensure that they've got the prerequisites in place to start going and doing a lot of work in the design the outcomes. You're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of money in there, right? So you come out of here and we go up to now the next process, which is design the outcomes, right? Uh, really, the main theme here is going to be the design theme. So most of the activity is going to be here around the design theme. Wrong color. All right. So we're going to have the design theme in place here. The design. Because now we're going to understand a lot more about the scope of the program. All right. And that's what we're really doing here is understanding a lot more about the program scope. All right. Understanding what it's all made up of. Right. So to a certain extent, we need to um, break this down. And it looks about foundations. We want to understand the foundations at this point, right? Foundations. Right. I'm missing the word solid because I don't want to mislead people. You know, the, the problem is if you think about solid foundations, it just depends on how you define it, right? You need to go to a sensible level to understand the detail of the program because you've got to be able to cover the whole length of the program at a reasonable level. So like product-based planning, if you use that in program-based planning or project-based planning, if you like, you can break that down to a reasonable level, a couple of levels down, to spread it across the whole program when you're going to the plan progressive delivery. But of course, until then, you don't want a high level, a too detailed level. You don't want to spend too much time in here. You might not get past the first tranche, right? So you just go down to the reasonable level, especially the design in more detail around the first tranche, because that's what you're going to do next, right? You don't plan it, you're just looking at what you might do within it. That's the point. Um, so the key activity within design, the outcomes, is to understand the vision, right? And therefore provide the vision statement, right? To give a lot of feel as to where we are in the future. This is the new, this is the new us. This is how we are now working in the new future, like with the um, relocation, the brand new building, and all the facilities compared to the way we were before, right? And therefore linked to that are the benefits, right? And what are the benefits of this move, right? So that's the benefits. Um, and from that, of course, we need to track the benefits in the benefits profiles. So profiles with the benefits and also therefore the benefits map. And the benefits map will show the relationship between you know, the capabilities, the outputs, the outcomes, the benefits, back to the, opera the, the organization's investment and the objectives of that particular uh, initiative that you're putting in place, okay? So you have the benefits profile, uh, which defines each benefit of the owner and all about the profile itself, how we're gonna measure the benefits and when it'll be measured, etc. So we can put it in, therefore, into the plan. So we'll also, therefore, from this, have a benefits realization plan. So we have a benefits realization plan, right? Which will be part of the program plan documentation, remember, right, at this point. Um, but from that, therefore, as a sort of a blueprint, we have the target, the target operating model, which explains and defines how the new environment will look. So it supports the vision. The vision is a high level view and a very full, a sort of um, a form that needs to be easily communicated, right? 
uh, and to get people on board. The detail is going to be in the target operating model, which has those seven elements, right? The seven elements of the process, technology, learning, et cetera, et cetera, and culture, and all those, how the operating, how the environment will be in the future, right? So the vision is saying, here we are in the future, and the target operating model is defining that in more detail about how that new vision is going to be working when you're there in the future, right? Um, so linked to some of all this, we need to understand the risks involved, right? So now we start to have risks. And we have risks in the business case here too, major risks here in cases anything like, you know, showstoppers, anything that's going to be beyond the, the, the risk appetite of the organization for your initiative. Now that's quite important to get that right as well. And then from that, we're able to start understanding the projects and other work involved to help us with the target operating model. So we have projects right, and other work, right? And that's why, you know, your sort of product-based planning type approach would help because then you can group those different objectives at the higher level into projects, right? And there may be sort of sub-projects underneath that, especially for the first tranche. Because you're not planning them yet, you're just looking at what type of projects I might need and how, how long they may to be. We're going to do all the rest of that real work in plan progressive delivery, right? And once we understand the sort of work and therefore the time frames, that gives us a better feel for the business case, right? So now the business case comes up and we now get a more detailed, a detailed business case. So if you're doing the five case business case, right, we still have the strategic one over here. Uh, we probably kicked off a bit of the economic business case, but we're going to have a lot more information here because we look at the preferred way forward. Uh, and secondly, we understand how we're going to procure the solution, how we're going to procure the work through the commercial, and so how we're going to fund it. Again, link back to the justification theme, how we're going to fund it and when we're going to fund it, the plan again. And then finally, we look at the how, how much it's going to cost a bit more from the management side of things. But we won't know more about that until we get into plan progressive delivery. So then this is the first pass on design, the outcomes. So all the other, all the other uh, themes are going to take a part in here. We've got, you know, the decision making theme going on. We have the, the uh, organization theme because we understand a lot more about the type of resources and people we will need within it. With justification theme here. Uh, because of the business case and understanding the benefits, etc. And then also we'll look at assurance theme because we need to understand that what type of assurance do I need to have in place for the type of program because now we've got a bit, a bit more of a detail of the design, right? And following that, um, the knowledge theme because now we're having information being trapped so we need to record that and turn it into information, you know, as we said, um, you know, taking from a tacit into explicit. So we're going to refine the program strategy, right? So this strategy comes up here. So we refine and put more detail behind the program strategy, right? And also the plans. So the program plans will start to have more detail in them. Uh, the program plans. program plans will be updated a bit more too. So we'll put that up in here uh, because now we're starting to uh, understand a bit more about all those different aspects, as we said, like assurance and justification, the finance and plan and the benefits realization plan. So that will feed down into here as well. All right. Uh, so from that, uh, we now start to get towards the end. So the plans are updated. Uh, we take the plan itself in here as well. Uh, and therefore start to put more detail because uh, we need to now plan the progressive delivery uh, process, which we're going to go to in a minute. So the detail for the plan progressive delivery. So now at the end of this, we're going to plan the next process as we do here and therefore also agree to go or not to go. So there's quite a bit of work going on within the design, the outcomes. That's why you need to plan for it here. And that's what you do at the end of the process of identifying a, prog a program, plan the next process. So we plan that, and at the end of this one, we'll plan the next process here in detail because you're going to have to do a bit of work in plan progressive delivery. All right, so I'll just put on here uh, 
agree, agree, go, no go. Right. Once we come out of, um, once we come out of plan of designing the outcomes, the next step is to go to plan progressive delivery. So we've now got the design in place. Now we need to plan how we're going to run it, all right? How we're going to run the program. So in the first pass here with both these two, it's a lot more detail, all right? Because obviously you're looking at the overall program at this level, all right? Uh, when we come back around again, you'll find obviously we're only just doing any minor changes, also hopefully relatively minor changes to both the design and therefore to the planning. The planning, of course, we'll be looking at planning the next tranche in detail, okay? So in the first pass in design, the outcomes, we'll have put quite a bit of detail behind the, the, the target model, what the projects might need to look like, etc., and refine all the documents, as we said, uh, with a map. But also what we do do down here is we are planning progressive delivery to do the work. But alongside we put in the target operator and look at the projects, we may well define which projects we want to run first in the first tranche, and have a bit more detail around that area there. Right. But remember, even in plan progressive delivery, what we're really doing is scheduling the work. We're scheduling the work throughout the whole program on the first pass, because we need to know that. We need to give the business an understanding when are we going to be doing the work as we see it in this first pass at the beginning of the program, because then we get an idea of what we can get in a scope. As much as we understand the scope here, we need to know what we can actually fit in here, right? And that therefore goes back to the overall timeframes, how relevant to the budgets, the risks, etc. all around that and refine all the documents, especially the business case, to give an idea whether this is actually worth the investment or not. And that's the point about plan progressive delivery is now to schedule the work, right? So basically what we do here is plan, plan the program. Right. On the first pass, it's planning the whole program. But again, we're only scheduling the time boxes and the, the projects, probably in time boxes, for the whole program. Because we need to know all those all that information about resources, systems, people, costs, etc. Okay. Um, so the main theme here is going to be the structure theme, right? Because it's structure is about planning. Right. So the main theme being used here is the structure theme. And of course, that also leads back to the org theme because now we know a lot more about the type of resources we will need to have from a people point of view, you know, any specialist resources we need to have. Right. And the key thing here is now to put the plan in place, right, and therefore define the tranches where we're going to put our project work in, right? So we start to look at our projects like this, and define the tranches. Right. I like my working in time boxes. I think it's a really good way of doing things actually. Right. So here we have other work, projects, etc. in here. And as you can see, they're overlapping in some cases, you know, assuming you have the resources to enable you to do that. Right. Right. So I just put those circles in for other work. So here what we are, we're scheduling, so we schedule the work into projects, so schedule, schedule the projects and other work into your uh, delivery plan. I'm going to delivery, delivery plan. Okay. Um, so here we have our tranches, just, you know, I also need to understand why I've got the red pen, red pen risks, right? right? Any risk, when you're planning, always look at the risks. So we have our tranches here. So this area here is my tranche. And of course, at the end of each tranche, we will be releasing uh, and looking at what we're releasing as capabilities, whether, you know, in the tranche and or at the end of it. So sometimes just at the end, it might be, individual releases. So these are the capabilities. So we're now planning the capabilities. But the whole thing is now to give us an idea of the full spread. But this is where we put the detail here, 
right? The Yito here for the first tranche. All right? So it might be a bit more detail and then I'll say a bit more about the design. But again, we're not planning the projects here, remember. We're planning and scheduling the work for the project. So the detail and the objectives in there. So it might be a bit more detail within that. All right. Um, so linked to the, um, the capabilities, as we roll those out, we will be deploying. So we could have a point of deployment here, maybe. Just put in here the deployment. of capabilities, right? If you like to do that, this is just capabilities. And scheduling those in there as well. And then underneath that, we'll have the um, the other plans linked to it. So it's a good idea to actually put the rest of the plans in here, quite frankly. Uh, we have the finance plan. Right, finance plan. Uh, we have the comms plan, communications plan, is, yeah. the communications plan for the stakeholder engagement, the communications plan. We have the assurance plan in there too. All right, so let's put the assurance plan in here. And of course, the real one we need to have is the benefits plan. So the assurance plan, and all these plans, remember, only run to the end of the program. The only one that runs past the program is the benefits realization. Because we need to understand about realizing the plans during it, the benefits during the, the program, but also, you know, the benefits roll on afterwards. So we go over there a bit, like so. Okay, um, so we take that tranche there and put a bit more detail into the tranche. We bring that down here and understand a lot more about the projects that are going to go on in there. A bit more work. This might be added some extra detail in here. So we've actually decided to break down a project into a few more. So we take that and add a bit more detail into it there. So, of course, at the end of the plan progressive delivery, we need to baseline. So, uh, end of the process, the first pass in particular, right? In the first pass in particular, we need to baseline all documents for one thing, all documents, right? And we also now have uh, a detailed business case, right? So we have a detailed business case as well. It's a final business case here, a full final business case. The strategy documents are all complete. So the program strategy is complete and the program plans are complete at this point as well. Right? And therefore, at this point, we then get the agree to go. We get agree, agree to go and no go at this point. And if we get the agreement to go, then we move from, move from here into the next process, which is now deliver the capabilities, deliver capabilities, which basically means really, you know, we're going to build, we're going to build them and then deliver them, which means handing them over. Right. So once we get the agree to go, because once we realize what the plan is about and how much the, how much the scope we can actually get in, could we update the business case, a full business case? Um, we've now got a better full of the plans. We've got all the approach documents full now for the program strategy, sign them all off, baseline them. So now I can get proper change, change control from here onwards and then go into the next process and run the first tranche. So this goes in here into the deliver the capabilities, right? Abilities to, to run. So we run the plan here in here. So just to write that down up here, run the first plan. So here we're going to run, run the charge plan. So the real effective thing is to, to build 
and then deliver. Right? So what I mean by that is we're going to build the requirement, build the, build, run through the projects, run through the projects in here. So build over it is the objectives we said we're going to build and deliver the capabilities, and then we're going to hand them over. Right? So run the plant tranche and then hand hand over the capabilities, the objectives, whatever outputs we've got, hand over the capabilities, the outputs from that particular tranche, right, the outputs. Because then we give them to business, this is where the BCM is also running in tandem with this point, and towards the end of the tranche, the BCM might be doing sort of, you know, operational ops work here, pre-transition work to get ready in the operational side of things to receive the capabilities that you're going to hand over at the end of that particular process. And that would then trigger the next one, which is embed the outcomes, which we'll come to in a minute. So during this whole area, we're going to be monitoring the control. So we monitor, monitor and control and report on progress and report where decided on the, um, on the progress, right? And towards the end, as I said, it prepares we're going to be preparing the uh, business environment, right? So we're going to prepare the business environment, business operations, if you like, business operations, ready for a transition, right? And then plan, plan next process, or prepare next process, really. Plan, prepare the next process at this point. And then we agree to go or no go at this point as well. Right. Agree, go, no go. All right. So, right. So once we come out to deliver the capabilities, the next process then is to embed the outcomes. Right. Where now this is where the BCM takes over in that having made sure that the the environment is ready to take on the capabilities, they now need to get them in and realize the benefits at this point in time. Right. So we need to realize the benefits, and that's the key purpose of the, the embed the outcomes, is once the op opportunities what's the operating environment there has got the new ways of working we're going to use the capabilities and realize the benefits so at this point in time it's about realizing benefits so at this point in time too this activity could well be going on during the, the subsequent tranche so as much as the the, the pm is now delivered the capabilities and handed them over they might wait and see for a, a little while, see how it's going, uh, and then track through any information coming out of embedded outcomes that evaluate new information, which will then feed back into the cycle and go around again, which will inform any internal or external changes that may have taken place or are going to impact on the program and come around and embed the outcomes. Right. So the point is now is to take the outputs, so realize them by taking the outputs, outputs here and therefore derive the outcomes make them work right so you know, use in other words use the new way of working which I find is a bit of a strange phrase really right in a sense use the new ways of working whatever that is you know process moved or whatever and realize the benefits right from that point of view so from there we will then take uh, any information from that. So it'll be feedback from the embed the outcomes into the next step, which is to evaluate new information. E evaluate new information, which will be in the form of reports from the tranche itself. So we'd have tranche reports feeding into that. Right, tranche reports or retrospectives, if you like, tranche reports, retrospectives. I'll put retro, 
I can respect his retros down there as well. And this, though, is the key place here, the key activity here. Now, knowledge, the knowledge and learning, because part of this is the lessons learnt, right? So we have lessons learnt of anything that's gone on internally, lessons learnt from a point of view, what could help us in the future tranche. So the whole point here, we have knowledge and learning from any lessons learnt from our reports and retrospectives on how that previous tranche has gone, both from the building and handing over and embedding the outcomes into the operations, right? Evaluate that information. But there's other information going too, from external information. So there will be external, external information that might be needed as well at this point uh, from things like anything happening, you know, politically, uh, environmentally as well. So really anything from the pestle perspective or, you know, if you're in commercial thing like Portis Five Forces, anything that's going on outside your organization, which could also have an impact on the, the subsequent continuation of your program, right? Because that can, that can obviously have an impact as well. So we need to recall that uh, information and therefore... Uh, that will be used to allow us to uh, feed back from here and go to two directions. Hopefully the first one is if the program is to continue, to join this loop back here and go back upwards and go back into design the outcome. So anything coming out of value new information will help with subsequent redesign of the, of the, the, um, the design or the TOM if necessary and the benefits associated with that you know, and also maybe any risks, depending on how the benefits have been realized during the bed, the outcomes, okay? Uh, which will be a continuous activity. It won't just suddenly stop, because now that we're using them, and it might sort of drift off a little bit, but at the same time, there's still feedback. And take that information, along with anything else that may have an influence, you know, externally, or other parts of the organization. There could be other things going on within the organization at portfolio level, for instance, or through other programs and projects, which may also have a negative or a positive impact on your own program, right? And that will take us back up to design the outcomes and therefore make those changes in there and therefore update the plan, overall plan, plus also plan the next tranche, right, with that new information that you have, whatever impact it's going to have on that new tranche, okay? Um, so at this point, we need to update, update any relevant documents, that are impacted by any relevant documents, docs that are impacted by uh, any new information that's come out from, therefore, you know, the knowledge and learning and look at the information, how we're recording that information, make sure that if any impact on the business case is recorded, the version control is managed properly, as we said, um, through the, the knowledge theme right, and how we control that information. How does that have an impact on the program? If we're going to continue, we go around the cycle again, right? Or if for some reason um, the program has nothing more to offer or could be handled by other organizations or other situations, we then go to closing. So we go to closing a program uh, in a couple of circumstances. One, because obviously we've completed all the work or enough work that the board is happy with, right? and therefore decide, and it's a sponsoring group that's signed it off, by the way, it's a sponsoring group that will close the program. So either because we've completed all the work, right? Um, so we have a control and closure, we completed all the work, and now we decided that that is it. We can close uh, the program closure, right? Or, as I said, there's a few circumstances you can consider here. The first one is we completed all the work and that's it done. You can still have completed all the work as another point of view, but there's still a couple of projects left, but we don't really need program governance to run them, right? So this is where we can say, okay, the program is now closed prematurely, if you like. However, we're gonna finish off a couple of these projects, but we don't actually need program governance to do that, okay? They can run by themselves. Now. Where that might come into play, which is quite interesting, is if you, when you, and what you should be doing is prioritizing your projects. Like you prioritize the work within it with something like Moscow, right? 
So if you end up with a couple of projects at the end here, which are could have type projects, or even should have for that matter, otherwise I need to get them done, really, but I don't need the whole program to do them. I can run them as an independent project because they're just, they're lower level. They still add a bit of depth to the solution, to the, 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 the change, but they're not critical to the change itself. We've completed all that work, right? So that's another type of scenario. Of course, the third one is you get to a point where the, the program can no, offer, no longer offer anything. Uh, it's just not going to work for whatever reason. We need to pull the plug. We've got some things, and this is what we, some piece is already done, and therefore that's okay for the moment, but we don't want to go any further. Run out of money, need to deploy the resources for something more critical, or it's just not working, or just beyond. We change the strategy, for instance, okay? And therefore, you just go and close the program, right? Quite often, you might do that at a landing point. The point about having the landing points is that is where it's more relevant to make that decision. But of course, the business can make the decision whenever they like. You can be halfway through, a, a, you know, delivering the capabilities and they want to pull the plug, right? In which case, you then arguably should try and close that prematurely, close it off any work, uh, just check anything in from an outcomes point of view, uh, look at the information coming from that, document the reason why you're shutting it down. If you didn't know, then it's an issue. If you had some mumblings, there was an uncertainty, a risk, then you've got a risk instead, and then you close the program that way around. So everybody has a controlled closure in one form or another. You know, otherwise, if you're carrying on, you just go around the loop again until at such point, as I said, that the program has now closed. Okay, so that's really wraps up the whole life cycle. Um, I hope give you a, a good view at the top of who's involved, what's involved, and, and how we manage the, the work through a program.